Are you, are you white? I just said, no, I'm a joke. You're not leaving. You're not a joke. No. Uh, uh, you're about to catch a charge, y'all. Nope. You're not leaving. I'm right here. I'm sorry. No. I don't. What? What? Yes. Joe. Joe, right here, has not paid me my money. I'm sorry. You're about to get a divorce, Joe. I'm posting this. You think I'm playing with you? you know Hello. I'm Patrick Brown, and this is a scripture versus scripture. And as you can see, there's our, our old friend, Pastor Joe, trying to hide, going down the stairs when he failed to pay this prostitute. Yes, Pastor Joe failed to pay a prostitute the money. He, she was owed for the uh, 15, 20 minutes of pleasure that he received. And she's made it clear that, yeah, you got the pleasure. I want my money. And as you can see, he is in hiding. Uh, a lot of people got... Uh, I ain't gonna say a lot of people. Some people uh, told me when I dropped a video about him being fired. I previously dropped a video about him being fired and you can um, find that video on my uh, playlist here on my channel. And what I wanna talk about today is being restored, repentance and restoration. A lot of people say, well, you should have put him on blast even though it's clear that you believe that he has been fired. And I disagree with that. It, once God put him on blast, there's nothing wrong with me putting him on blast because he had been fired. And some of you say, well, you know, maybe God wants to restore him to a place of uh, his position of prominence and uh, things like that. Because the Bible is clear about restoring Christians who have fallen. And I want to talk about that today in my video. Who God restores, because it's clear that God does restore. But who does God restore? That's the question. Who does God restore? And if you've been fired. Can you be restored back to your place of prominence or position or to your previous place of prominence or position? Now, repentance and restoration. When does God want to restore somebody? But first, let's look at the scripture that actually says that we should restore people who have fallen. We go to Galatians chapter six, verse one. Right. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if a man think himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. All right. Now, it says somebody been overtaken in a fault. Restore that brother. Restore him. Then it says, uh, in the spirit of meekness, lowliness, don't forget you're imperfect too, that you have faults, you have flaws, things like that. So do the people sound right when they say, hey, uh, Brown, you're a little bit too hard on, on, on Brother Joe. You little, you're a little bit too hard on Brother Joe. Even though God has put him on blast, even though God has fired him, you know, you a little, little, little bit too hard on the brother, you shouldn't put him on blast. No, he was already put on blast. I just pointed out that he was fired. And how do I know? I said that also in the previous video, but let's keep going and look at what Galatians says here. It says, in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. The same way Brother Joe was tempted, I could be tempted, uh, according to the scripture. All right. Bear you one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ, which is the law of love. Let's be loving to one another. Let's be meek. Let's be gentle. Let's be kind. Let's be patient. For if a man think himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. Don't think you're better than anyone else. We all are sinners saved by grace. All right. All this is kind of confirming to the people who say, wait a minute, Pastor Joe could be restored and maybe we should not be so hard on Pastor Joe. To all that, I say poppycock. Poppycock. When God put you on blast, it means that you have rejected his counsel. You have rejected his warnings. You have rejected everything that God has sent to warn you, to, to keep you out of the situation. Whereas he had to put what you, your lifestyle and you're doing on blast for all the public to see. It is true that we all fall. It is true that we are all sinners. It is true that no man can say that he is perfect except Christ Jesus himself. But if all these things are and indeed the case, what's going to happen is 
if I'm repentful, if I am uh, sorrowful, if I if I recognize my faults and confess them to Christ, but we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness, God will never put it on blast for the multitudes and scores of people to see in the first place. He will handle it in-house. The point is, once God sees fit to put you on blast and to make it to be worldwide knowledge or Instagram knowledge, YouTube knowledge, that means you have been rejected and you have been fired. Now, as far as restoration, can a person that's been fired be restored? Let's kind of look at this. But if, let every man prove his own work, and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. For every man shall bear his own burden, right? Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teaches in all good things. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he reap. I'm going to say that again. Be not deceived, though. He says, since all that, then he says, look, but be not deceived. God is not mocked. For a man that soweth, uh, for for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he reap. What do you mean? Whatever you sow, you're going to reap. God not mocked now. Now, God says, look, uh, if you do right, I can reward. If you do wrong, I know how to punish. I'm not mocked. If you, you sow into the flesh, you're going to reap into the flesh. You sow into the spirit, you're going to reap into the spirit. If, if I plant corn, I should expect to get corn. If I plant, plant wheat, I should expect wheat to sprout up. All right, it's it gonna go down the seed, it's gonna come up a plant. All right, so verse 8 For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Now, it's not gonna be immediately, but after time, it's going to happen. Which one is it gonna be? Give me off the game. She's please. gonna know. Give me off the game. Three, four times a week, he here, y'all. Facebook. He's here meeting with me in this room. Yeah. No, I'm not getting you off of nothing. Everybody gonna know about you. Run me my money. I ain't got time for this. You know my money is valuable. I'm sorry. You know my time is my money. And I, I I'll explain my time with you. I gave you 200 last time. And you got $200 worth of pleasure the last time too. Well, wait a minute. After time, after time, well, these people that's doing these things, again, she said on tape, oh, you come here twice, three times a week. You don't think God was wanting him every week, put it on his conscience, put it on his spirits, put something on his word when he stood up in the pulpit and talked to the people about what you're doing is wrong. You need to cut it out. You need to cut it out. And he came back the next week. What you're doing is wrong. You need to cut it out, cut it out. And, and then she said, you, you was a regular. You come all the time. Then he said, the last time I came, I gave you 20. So this wasn't a one and done situation. Because if you really felt bad about it, if you really prayed about it, if you really said, I shouldn't have did this, I shouldn't have cheated on my wife, I shouldn't have slept with this prostitute, I shouldn't have whatever, and the Lord forgive me, okay, he'd have stopped it. He would have repented, he'd have stopped it, the Holy Spirit would have interceded for him. But by him coming back over and over again, he proved that the voice of the God, the voice of the Holy Spirit, the little still voice inside of every believer was not there or it was in the way. When you annoy it over time, not instantly, a lot of times it's happened over years. God finally says, okay, I tried. I'm putting you on blast. And when God puts you on blast, you've been fired. All right. Now, this is, uh, let's give an example of, uh, 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 let's say, why we're restored because, well, why we're restored because we're all in, in, uh, imperfect. We're all human. Okay, who to restore is the question again. Who to restore? True, repentant people. People that get it. People that's sorry to understand that they gave God a black eye. Not that they've been caught. That's not, they're not sorry they've been caught. They, they're truly sorry for the deed itself. Right? These are the people that need to be restored. Right? Not any and everybody. Not the, these people, uh, pastors that have been caught uh, uh, two or three times. You heard, oh, the pastor such and so up oh, cheating on his wife again. Pastor so so cheated on the wife again. He said he's sorry. Pastor so so cheated on the wife. He said he's sorry. And, and he said, no, not these people. No, no. True repentant people. Because the Holy Spirit is going to intercede and, and it's going to give you the strength and the power to live a life mature and, and, and worthy of the calling. Right? First of all, too many people call themselves. God didn't call them in the first place. 
Let's make that straight. Let's get the let's get that out the way right now. Let's make it clear. All right? But there are those who God have called, who God have or ordained, and for whatever, whatever reason they stumble and fall, but God is able to pick them up again. This is true. God is able to restore. Okay, restore. All right. So restore a brother in the spirit of meekness. That's what scripture says. When we go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. Second Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 6 says this. Now we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you withdraw yourselves from every brother that worketh disorderly and not after the addition which you received of us. For you for yourselves know how ye ought to follow us, for we behave not ourselves disorderly among you. All right now, notice here it says, "We command you, we command you to withdraw yourself from every brother that walketh not orderly, that walketh disorderly, and not after the traditions of that you received of us, not after the apostles' doctrine. This, this brother is doing his own thing, is doing what he want to do. But you yourself know how we ye ought." To follow us, but we behave not ourselves what disorderly. Don't follow disorderly people. That's scripture. Don't follow disorderly people. No, 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 no. Now, when someone repent and get back in order, okay. If you're disorderly, don't. If you back in order, you're an orderly person. If you're out of order, you're you're a disorderly person. Or you in order, out of order. Somebody sleeping around. Somebody, you know, beating his wife. Somebody still. No, you're disorderly. Don't follow them. But if you back in order, if you've been placed back in order, when? We're going to talk about that too. When are you back? After a period of time, after a period of probation where you have proved your, proven yourself to be back in order. Well, I'm sorry, so I'm back in order today? No, after you have proven yourself to be back in order, then restore the person. All right. So how do we know this? Let's keep going. Second Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 14. <clears throat> And if any man obey not our word by this epistle, note that man and have no company with him, that he may be ashamed. You, ye, excuse me, yet count him not as an enemy, but admonish him as a brother. Notice here. If any man obey not our word by this epistle, by this letter, note that man and have no company with that. Shun him. This is divine discipline. This is church discipline. It even tells you why. If you disfellowship him, if you uh, stop speaking to him, if you don't allow him in the meetings, if you if you do this, he said, this man should no. If he care about his church family, he should be ashamed. He should be embarrassed. He should this should wake him up. He should be like, wait a minute. I'm on probation. I'm about to be kicked out. I'm about to be disfellowship. I'm about to be. If, if, he said, but do it in love. Why? What are you trying to do? You're trying to bring him back. What you're trying to do, you're trying to embarrass him. You're trying to shame him. Right? Yeah. Let's take this further. Let's take this home. This preacher, these Joes, you need to sit them down. You need to sit them down. Right? At the very least, you need to sit them down. Now, now this is the very least. Now, now those who are uh, insincere, those who keep the same sin, those who keep embarrassed, those those have been warned and are fired? No, no. You don't restore them. They've been fired. Those who are on probation, the God is warning, who 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 God has uh gave a uh <laughs> has gave a uh, strong warning to, then you sit them down, you give them a chance to think about their actions, and then they they who are very sincerely uh about their uh, sin, very sincere about their apology, very sincere about trying to make up for what they've done uh, and, and and understand how they embarrass the church and embarrass God, them you restore. But even then, after a period of time, not immediately, you know, they must uh, again prove that they are sincere. They are sincere about their stance and their apology and their willingness to do the right thing and the ability to do the right thing. Okay, how do you know he's not going to fool with prostitutes again unless for a year he ever fooled with prostitutes again? How do you know he's not going to beat his wife again 
and lived for a year. He never beat his wife again. How do you know? So it's not just his word, it's his action, it's his deed. It's his deed, not just his word. Okay? Who do we restore? Someone who has admitted their faults, who, who have confessed their faults, who, who have sincerely repented, and last but not least, and this is the part that a lot of churches are not doing now, who have not spent their time in God's chastisement, who have not spent their time, in other words, who have not sat down from their position, who have not, who have not take time to sit and to listen and to learn, to grow, to heal. You know, you don't you don't keep going. Uh, I, I slept with the prostitute today and I'm preaching a sermon. This is no, 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 you sit down. It's time for you to sit down. Okay? It's something you need to listen to the word. You you need to grow. You need to get get spiritually strong again. You need to let the Holy Spirit work in you again. You need you, you need to hear a, a word from God. No, no, no. But we as church, we won't do that. And the leadership, most of them will not do that, even though that's what the Bible calls for. Then you can be restored. Okay. David was promised. David the king, when he took uh Bathsheba from Uriah and had Uriah killed. David was on the run for years from his own son. He was on the run. He was the king, but he was on the run. Why? God put him on probation. God was punishing him. And after his probation time ended, after years of running from his son, God restored the kingdom to him. God restored the kingdom. But David immediately admitted he was wrong. He, when, when it was brought to him uh, by Nathan the prophet that he was wrong, David didn't skirt the issue. David didn't run. You know what David said? Let's go to 2 Samuel chapter 12. 2 Samuel chapter 12. When, when David's sin was brought to him, he repented immediately. He realized that he was wrong. He was sorry from the heart. And he still was punished. He still had to go on a run. He still had things that happened to him. He still had to wait years before he got the kingdom back. Okay? Why? You got to endure God's chastisement. Not only is it good enough for you to say, I'm sorry, but you have to go through the period of God's chastisement. And it might take months. It might take years. Right? Samuel, 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 9 says this. And this is Prophet Nathan uh, telling David about his sin, how he did what he did. Wherefore hast thou despised the commandment of the Lord, Nathan talking to David, to do evil in his sight? Thou hast killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword, and have taken his wife to be thy wife, and hast slain him with the sword of the children of Ammon. Now therefore the sword shall never depart from thine house, because thou hast despised me, and hast taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be thy wife, to me here is God, you know, speaking for the Lord. He despised God. Thus said the Lord, Behold, I will raise up evil against thee out of thy own house, and I will take thy wife before thine eyes and give them unto thy neighbor, and he and he shall lie with thy wives in the sight of this son, verse 12, for thou did it secretly. But I will do this thing before all Israel and before the son. He said, look, your sin may be in secret. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to do out in the open. Everybody going to see this. Yeah. Your sin may be secret. But uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to make sure everybody see your punishment. I want to make sure everybody see your chastisement. I want to make sure everybody know what, what, what are we talking about here. Let's go back to what we talked about in modern time when he said, do this to the brother. But what you want to do is what? Embarrass him. Shame him. And to coming back and to doing what's right, we need to embarrass it. Now, it's not to, to, to let him go away uh, permanently, but for him to say, you know, I'm sorry, uh, you know, I was wrong, uh, you know, I embarrassed God, and now God has just embarrassed me, right? So, so when you when you sit him down, that's going to embarrass him. It's going to shame him. And it's designed to bring about true repentance, and it's also designed for him to think about, to meditate on his actions, to meditate on his wrongs, and to do better next time. That's what it's for. That's what it's for. That's what divine discipline is for. All right? So, verse 13. And David said unto Nathan, this is the part I want you to see, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said unto David, the Lord also hath put away thy sin, thou shalt not die. Notice here. Nathan told him, David admitted, he said, you know what? I think listen to him. He didn't say, no, nah, I didn't do that. He listened. He said, you know what? I have sinned against the Lord. You're right. 
You're right. I was wrong. You're right. I sinned against God. And then Nathan told him immediately, he said, God has put away your sin. Yet it took years for David to get that kingship back. Admitting your fault does not mean the punishment phase is a race. The learning phase is a race. The chastisement phase is a race. No, David still had to go through his chastisement, the punishment, whatever. So these people that apologize and y'all put them back in the pulpit, ain't time yet. They have to go through the chastisement. I'm not saying restore, but you don't instantly restore. They don't instantly get their place back. They don't instantly. No, no. And some men are never proved worthy of getting their place back. Because in the interim, while they sitting down, word come out, they slept with somebody else, his wife. If word come out, they stole somebody else's money. Word come out, whatever, or they just totally leave because they're unwilling to wait and endure God's chastisement. I'm going to start my other church. Yeah, y'all see me? I'll, I'll start. Okay. Bye. Bye. Because you're unwilling. You, you, you're too arrogant to, to humble yourself and accept God's chastisement. Okay. Now, a lot of people might say, well, who have done this thing right? I know a preacher who have done this thing right. Now, I don't know much about the preacher. I don't know much about the doctrine, but I do understand that he did this divine chest time and thing right. There's a minister by the name of Frederick Price Jr. Okay. He came to the church. He was a senior pastor after his father died. He's, you know, he took over his voice. Fred Price uh, was a senior pastor. And uh, he died, Christ Crenshaw Christian Center. And uh, his son, Frederick Price Jr., took over. And I don't know, he was passing a short time, three, four years. And then he finally came to the congregation and he announced that he was sitting himself down. He said he had did something, didn't say what. People can speculate all they want to about what it was, but he didn't say what, to my knowledge. Uh, and he said, 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 you know, I did something and I feel unworthy to stand here before the congregation, whatever right now, and I'm going to sit myself down. To my knowledge, Frederick Price Jr. sat down about a year. It might have been 11 months, 13 months, 12, something like around about a year. And then later on, he was reinstated as pastor. That is doing the thing right. It was even, he was even put on blast that it was known what he did, but he knew what he did. He felt bad about it. He felt repentful. Repentful about it. He knew that he needed some chest. He knew that he needed time to get right with God. He knew that he needed some healing. He needed all. He knew all this stuff, and he did what he needed to do. That is see when you do things right and you are actually sorry and repentful for what you did. God don't have to put you on blast. You come congregation say, look, it's something I'm dealing with. So you know, before God would even put you on blast, well, it would never even be uh, out again. He didn't say what he did. He just said, uh, I'm guilty of a sin and I cannot stand before you as your pastor right now at this time. You know, pray for me, whatever. And then a year later, he was reinstated. That is doing it correctly. And I very much um, um, respect for uh, Frederick Price Jr. for doing it that way, because that's the way it should be done. Because if God put you on blast again, that means he has warned you time and time again, but you didn't feel repent, repentful. You didn't repent. You didn't feel sorry for you. You didn't feel bad. Your conscience didn't bother you. Nothing. And then God had to put it out and out you to the point. And now you now you're crying and you're sorry. But the reality is you car you're sorry that you got caught. Because I'm telling you, if that happens, God had gave you plenty of opportunity to do what uh, Fred Price Jr. did is to step down on your own before God saw fit to make it public knowledge. Let us bow with that message and I hope you've been blessed with that. Heavenly Father and Father God, Lord, we just thank you so much for your blessings, oh, Heavenly Father. And it's true in your word that we need to repent people. Uh, it's true in your word, Lord, that we need to restore people, Lord. But only people that are truly repentant, only people that have not been fired by you, Lord, but only on probation, only warned, oh, Heavenly Father, uh, only shown by you, Lord, that if they keep this up, it's going to be over. And most people who have a heart for Christ, a heart for God, is going to sit themselves down, Lord. They're going to do what it takes to get right in your sight before they stand before the people as a, a, hip, a hypocrite, Lord. And they don't want hypocrisy to be part of the church, Lord. They want to serve you in spirit and in truth. We pray that more men like to stand up, Lord, that we recognize these men, Lord, and place them in positions of leadership and not the hooker crooks, not the people that place themselves, Lord, 
in positions of leadership, Lord, because we know there's too many people out there like that who only seek the gain of themselves, Lord. They only seek the uh, acknowledgement of themselves and not the glory of Christ. And for this reason, Lord, we pray that we be strong as believers and prayed up in everything we do. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.